These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. What is the name of this molecule? It's a benzene ring. Benzene. Maybe you can take a guess as to what the name of this molecule would be. We haven't really started talking about this systematically, but take a guess as to what might be a logical name. That's a very logical guess. Now, one difficulty when you have a ring in a straight chain is who should you treat as the principal chain and who should you treat as the substituent? So you decided to treat the ring as the substituent and you treated this as the main chain. Um, now, in the lecture notes in this particular case, they decided to name this as the main chain. No, I'm sorry, they treated the ring as the main chain as this, and this is the substituent. So if we were going to treat this as the main chain and this is the substituent, what would be uh, a logical name? Let's just take a guess. Ethylbenzene? You figured it out? Okay, very good. We already know that this is called benzene, and if we were going to name two carbons as a substituent, it would be ethylbenzene. We don't need to say one ethylbenzene, because if there's only one thing on a ring, by definition, it's at the number one. Now, your, your approach seemed logical. You called it phenylethane. Uh, that's something that gives me a lot of trouble, knowing who, who to call the main chain, the ring or the, the straight chain portion. Uh, however, uh, in this case, it, 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 the benzene kind of just, it, sometimes you just kind of do what seems convenient in a way, or what would give you a simpler name. And in this case, I don't know, this just seems more important mm -hmm. than this. So this seems like a logical name. So using the same approach as before, what would be the, uh, what would be the IUPAC name for this molecule? Methylbenzene. That's right. However, it turns out that it's hardly ever called that. Okay. As, as is often the case, there are some common names that have almost supplanted the IUPAC names. I don't know if you happen to know what the, the common name for this is. When there's a methyl group on benzene, it turns out that the common name for this is toluene. It just has to be memorized. All right. And like I say, uh, that, that uh, is used much more often than the IUPAC methylbenzene okay. terms. That just has to be memorized. Here's another compound where we almost always use a common name. This is called styrene. Notice that what we have here is a ethylene double bond mm -hmm. on the benzene. So the double bond on the benzene, the common name for that is styrene. Now here's a really common molecule that has a common name. This is one that comes up a lot. This is called phenyl. That name actually is quite logical. Where do you think the phen comes from? The, well, as a substituent, the benzene ring. Is a That's right. We know that phen or phenyl is often used for benzene. And where does the OL come from? From the alcohol or the hydroxy. That's right. So this is actually a very logical type of common name. I suppose that the IUPAC name what would be benzenol, but no one ever uses that. People almost always call it phenol. In fact, I think some of these common names are so common that IUPAC has caved in and accepted those as its own names. So in a sense, maybe this is the IUPAC name now.
Here's another compound that has a common name. This is called aniline. Just has to be memorized. Okay. What, what would be the name for the type? What, what type of functional group do we have up here? Anamine. Yeah, we have an amine. Um, but rather than calling this a benzenamine, it's almost always called aniline. What type of functional group do we have up here? Um, what type of functional group is this? Ignoring the benzene. Well, um, it's a. Is it? Um, and now, what we have to do is. This is a condensed notation. We just have to have memorized what is this the condensed notation for. Well, this is the condensed notation for aldehydes. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. oh yes, yes. We just need to kind of have memorized that that's the standard condensed notation for aldehydes, although it should also make sense. Uh, how can we get the carbon to have enough bonds here? Well, the carbon only has one hydrogen on it, so how can it have enough bonds only if there's two bonds to the oxygen? So that would have to make it an aldehyde. So actually, if we try to draw the Lewis diagram, there's nothing this could be but an aldehyde and still have the carbon to have enough bonds. All right. So that's an aldehyde. So yeah, we should simply uh, make a flashcard that this is a common condensed notation for aldehydes. Now, I suppose that IUPAC would want to call this then benzene al, benzene al, but no one ever calls it that. Instead, they call it benzaldehyde. Benzaldehyde. And that seems quite logical to me again. Benz for benzene and aldehyde for the aldehyde group. Well, here's another condensed notation that we need to remember what this stands for. Do you remember what type of functional group this condensed notation would be? Carboxylic acid. That's right. Do you remember what the suffix is for carboxylic acids? Oic acid. Oic. That's right. And therefore, the common name for this would be benzoic acid. Benzoic acid. That seems pretty logical. What type of functional group do we have up here? An, uh, an ester. Is that correct? Actually, this would be an ester. If you have a RO connected to a carbonyl, this is a name that people oftentimes confuse with that, which is an ether. ether. Here we have an ether. Remember, ether is just ROR mm -hmm. without the carbonyl. So it's a very common mistake to confuse esters. And ether. So here we have a carbon. What's and the condensed notation then for like an ether ester? That's a good question. Like if we were to have it on the ring. Like this would be a condensed okay. notation for a ester, but if it was going to be on the ring, then it would look like this. Okay. Notice that an ester is very similar to a carboxylic acid. Except instead of having an OH, it has an OR. Okay. Well, if this is the condensed notation for an acid, this should be the condensed notation for an ester. So an ester has to have two oxygens. Okay. With only one oxygen, this would be an ether. Well, anyway, that's just a little uh, review of this idea from a previous term that this is an ether. Now, the common name for this is amisole. Again, that just has to be memorized. So the common name for this methoxy ether here is amisole. And I skipped one of these because it doesn't come up much, but it might as well be complete. This one doesn't come up as much in my experience, but this is called cumene. It, what is it, just an isopropyl group, isn't it? That's right. So uh, a more IUPAC name for this would be isopropyl benzene. But no one calls it that. Apparently, they call it cumene, although this doesn't come up as much as the previous one. So anyway, simply want to go through what we just went through and make flashcards of those so that you can just memorize those common names.